Right, so now uh, we just need to attach the front and rear as well as the shaft, and I'm actually going to begin uh, with the shaft. Uh, so with the shaft, you want to grab the shaft, uh, you have that little hole there, you're going to slide, so make sure that bearing is there, and it's, it's going to be just, the bearing's going to be just past the flush point. Uh, you're going to stick this here, so bearing first, and you're going to go past the hole. Now in that hole, you're going to drop the pin. I'm going to try to hold it with my finger so you can see in the camera. Oh, that's a bad idea. Never mind. Let me turn horizontal. So there's the pin. Make sure that you line it up in there. And it, when you place it, it should click. You may have to use your table. There we go. Once it clicks, you're set. That's not going anywhere. Now you can place that off to the side, and you're going to install the front end of the vehicle. And the reason why it's better to install the front end is when this goes in, it'll just make it easier for you to spin this and line up the rear than to reach in and do this. So at this point, I've gone ahead and I've placed my uh, gear and shaft. So now, if you pay attention to the shaft, see how it's see oh there you go it's it's flat on two sides if you look carefully in there it has that same shape well it's the same case in the front so you're gonna have to line it up you may have to rotate so it's just easier I find it easier to do the front just set it there slide it in it's the easiest way to go now, in order to remove this, you don't have to remove the front end, but it is easier to remove the front end, but you can do it just re by removing the rear. Now, in this case, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to place this top screw, and that's the only screw out of the four that is not countersunk. That's the reason why I'm going with this one. But I will not be tightening it all the way yet. At this point, I'm going to flip the car. I'm just placing some fingers there on the shaft so this doesn't pop out again. Uh, but now, I just need to attach these three screws. And I'm going to drive this, but not all the way in, just to get close. One of the things that I do like about countersunk screws is they line things up. So the center screw is the one that I'm going to screw in first, and then I'll screw the, then I'll tighten the two outer screws. Again, I'm just getting them close, so you should be able to tell it's not fully tight yet. I mean, my nails hitting it. Uh, here we go. So now I'm going to get this one close again. Now I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to go over here. And to this one right over here. And that's it. Now I can flip it over, and I will do this center brace. And one of the nice things about this center brace, it's, it's very robust. Uh, so again, this is why I think uh, Fortec is a very good choice for a starter car or a car that you can race in a Fortec class. And then later on you can just bash, you know, just run, a, run it about your neighborhood and not worry too much about breaking parts. Parts are accessible uh, and they are more affordable. Now we need to attach the rear. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up so that it is going upward. I want it perpendicular to the floor. So it's lined up this way. And the reason why I'm doing that is because that's the way I lined up the shaft. It just makes it easier. If you want it, want it horizontally, that's fine. You can. Now, don't pay attention to the pin. It's the shaft, right? Pin is actually 90 degrees. Uh, here we go, and then this
this will just should just slide in and that's it. Now if this were not sliding in you would probably have to just turn this to line them up and that would be all. Uh, but now at this point grab the screws and all three are the same size so it will not matter which one goes where. Here we go. And right now I'm driving the center one first. Let's drive this other one over here. Now the center one I actually drove in uh, most of the way, all the way, I drove it all the way. And I did the same thing on the other side, but usually you do not want to do that, uh, just to make sure that everything lines up. Uh, I just got lucky, maybe because it's a brand new chassis. It could be. There we go. And that is that. Uh, so now I have the front and the rear completely assembled, with the exception of uh, all of my electronics. So now, uh, before I can mount this, because this covers up the gears, I have to go ahead and mount the electronics. So the electronics, I will go and mount in the next one. In here, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and mount the wheels. You know what, we have time, why not? Let's mount the wheels. Uh, so the, the wheels, we have, uh, Fronts and rears, and you can tell because the fronts are narrower, and it's the difference is obvious uh, when you're looking at them. The other thing too that you have to pay attention to is these are directional tires. Therefore, uh, you will have to figure out which way they go. And the way that you can tell is, all right, so if the car is going this way, these marks have to go forward. So that means that this tire has to go forward, which means I cannot mount it here. If you just place them first, line them up, well, the face of the wheel has to go on the outside because the tire has to point that way. And that's how I know that one goes there, this one goes here. And the reason for that design is so that as this is rolling on the ground, so let me show you here, Let's just, it's rolling this way. Uh, say water goes in there, that's the way your car tires work as well, it's ejecting that water, it's just, it's, it's like a little jet of water, it's just dumping water out through there. So then the tire can actually fall, touch the pavement because the water has somewhere to run, but then it's also shooting out the water through there. Uh, that's the reason why you have those little grooves in the way that you do. Uh, you should do one by one, uh, I'm just placing both of them just so the car uh, sits flat or you know sits level on both sides. But you want to do one at a time. And I'm doing this because I'm not using a a block or a stand to hold the car up. That's the reason why as well. Right, so you just use your seven millimeter driver and then you can just hold on to the tire or you could actually spin the tire and hold the driver. It doesn't matter, you can do them both. But just remember not to over tighten. If uh, one of the nuts keeps falling out, do not over tighten because you're just gonna damage the plastic on the wheel or the hex. You can actually compress the plastic on the hex and then your tire will get stuck or if you're trying to put, sorry, your wheel will get stuck and then it won't work. Uh, so just get serrated, better serrated nuts. Now really quick, something else in the front. You should be able to tell right now what is wrong. Perfect. So these are already correct, right? They're facing that way, right? The lines are going that way. These are backwards. So that's something else too. And you can put them on and then look at it and see if they're facing you, pointing at you. So face the car away from you. If these are pointing at you, they're wrong. Nothing should be pointing at you. Therefore, you just grab them and then just swap them. Now they should be pointing away from you. 
And I really do like this uh, black chrome. Uh, I'm not sure what they call it. I'm calling it black chrome just because Craftsman, uh, Craftsman Tools has uh, uh, tools that come in this uh, darker chrome and they call it black chrome. Uh, at least that's what I heard. I think, I think it's in the packaging as well. I don't remember to be honest, but it's a beautiful looking chrome. Think about it as if gunmetal were chrome. There we go. And the tires are on. So now we only need the electronics and that's what we are going to install in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.